Hi everyone and welcome to the latest soldering tutorial and as always thanks for tuning in. Now in this one I'll show you two different ways to remove your flexi flat cable connectors, quite a common sort of connector. Obviously as you can see a lot of damage across the top, top's been partly pulled off exposing the pins. So we're going to do this one with basically a hot air gun, quite a common standard method. But going across to this second one, this one basically you can see the end clips being pulled off, quite a common fault on these. So basically this front part can't sort of clip in and stay in place. So I'm going to show you how to remove this second one with a totally different method. Where you don't need a hot air gun. So this can uh, yeah, hopefully help all the people who haven't got themselves a hot air gun. So what we do, we go back to the first one. We'll get this removed. What we do at the end, I'll show you how to clean all these up. And get a new one fitted uh, in its place. So we take you right through the process step by step. Hopefully you enjoy the video. And uh, yeah, learn something along the way. Right, so coming to method one, where I'm just going to use the hot air gun to remove this. And the first thing I do, is I remove this clip at the front that's sort of hanging out. So let's just get rid of that. So what, what I've done, as you can see, I've put silver foil tape over the edges, also over the resistors. I've also protected the other connector that's underneath there. Basically, because it's quite a soft plastic, so it's going to melt. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add some rework flux just along the joints, just to aid the solder melting. And then we'll get this removed. Now I'm going to use temperature about 390 degrees Celsius. Got my hot air gun set to about, sort of the air about 80. Got an eight, a quick 861 DA station. Sort of very good, sort of trusty station. So what I'm going to do first, add some flux along the joints. So this is just going to aid the solder to melt. Just going to run a small bead of flux right along the joints. Just put a little bit around that end. Let's get a hot air gun in action. Like I say, I've got the temperature set to about 390, the air about 80. So let's get removing. So it should come off fairly quickly. So you can hear the air going, so hopefully you can hear me through the air. Just run it right around the connector. Just keep, gently keep circling. But be patient when using hot air guns. We normally, I normally put tape all around the edges just to protect the edges. But for this one, the front's quite away from where I'm working, so I don't feel like I need it. Just be patient, it will soon go. We see the solar melting. Work your way along the joints. Wait, you will see it soon go. It's already getting loose, I can see it moving. Right, so I'm just going to slide this off now. Right, I've slid the connector off. So as you can see, all the pads and the end fixing pads are all in perfect condition. Just need cleaning up now. We'll get rid of all that sort of solder soon using solder braid. Basically, that's the, that's how easy it is with a hot air gun. So, the main thing with that, just be patient. Don't try and remove it too early, as you could take the pads. So, what we do, I'll get this cleaned up, and then we'll uh, yeah move on to method two. Well, just quickly before we move on to method two, I'm just going to show you how you can remove all this excess solder that's left on the pads from the removal of the connector. I've already added a bit of reworked flux along these. I've also added some flux to my solder braid. I've mentioned that in a few videos. So all I'm going to do, I've got because this was done with leaded solder, I've got my soldering iron set to about 340 degrees Celsius. Like I say, I've already added some flux to my braid. All I'm going to do, just add it on the pad. Just run it along, quickly along all the pads. Over the end one. That's basically cleaned all them up. All you can see in the middle, it's only sort of rework flux so I'm just going to quickly clean that off you see how clean these have all come up 
So I've got my cleaning cloth dipped in, or I've got it dipped in ultra soul cleaning fluid. Just give it a quick wipe over. You've got a lovely flat base now to uh, to start. You know, basically, uh, before you fit the next connector, you've got a lovely flat base. It's a good, it's a good guide. That's what you're looking for. Lovely flat pads, no solder on there at all. So that's, that's ready to take a new connector. So, saying earlier about the silver tape, this is just this is made by a company called 3M. It's a double side, well, it's a sort of single sided, sort of sticky tape. Get try and get your silver tape with sticky backed. And that's going to hold the board perfectly in position. It's going to protect your plastic from melting when you're using a hot air gun. Advanced tapes also do this. So that's what you're looking for: silver foil tape aluminium tape with a sticky back so anyway what we do get onto method two this that's for basically the people who haven't got a hot air gun and uh, yeah it's a really good method so we'll move on to that one now right so moving on from the hot air method come to this second method now if you haven't got a hot air gun this is a really good option i've showed similar methods to this in other videos but it also works great for these connectors basically all i've got a piece of copper wire this is just a strand from an earth cable straightened it out, all I'm going to do, get all the joints soldered to it underneath, all onto that wire, turn it around the corner, get the two fixing pads, one at each end soldered to it as well. Basically run my iron along all the joints at one time and the heat will travel right around the wire, all the joints become melted at the same time and the connector slides off. And what I'm going to do off camera, I'm going to form this wire into the shape sort of we desire and then I'll rejoin you when we come to do the soldering stage. Now I'm only doing it off camera just to speed the video up. So yeah, I'll rejoin you uh, when I've got it formed into shape. Right, it's just quickly before I place this sort of shaped copper wiring into position. I'm just going to remove the sort of uh, broken front part of the connector. Just to, yeah, you don't really want that in the way. So just push that out of, way, out, of the, uh, out of the way. Also got a small part sticking up at the end, just get that out of the way. And as you can see, down the end... I've just because it's quite a small board, I've just secured it down to another board using captain tape. So yeah, just stop stop the board sliding around. So right now we're ready to uh here yeah, to place the shaped copper wire into position. Right, so as you can see, I've placed the formed copper wire in position. So what I'm gonna do first of all, I'm just gonna get these two end points, the one there and one underneath that little turned in piece of copper there, get them attached to the wire. I'm doing this in leaded solder, so I've got my temperature set to about 340 degrees Celsius. Now I'm going to do the two end fixing points with quite a small iron tip. When I do the large, sort of the larger row of pins along the front, I'm going to do that with quite a large tip, just to get a bit more heat into it. So what we do, just going to add a tiny bit of rework flux to the end points, and then get them tacked on. So you can do this with just a large iron tip all the way around, but just for the video, sort of try not to block too much. I, as much as I can do with a small tip, I'll try to do that. So we just get them two end points attached. That's a good base to get the rest of the wire attached to all them pins. So that's that point attached. Just do the same up this end. So that's that point attached. So all you've got to do now, I'm going to change my iron tip like I say, and we'll get them, get the 40 pins along the front attached, and then uh, add the heat right away along the sort of connector should slide off. Right, so I've changed my iron tip to quite a large one. I've added some rework flux along the whole 40 pins. So let's try and get them attached. So simply a case of just feeding solder in right away along. Just get underneath the wire so they all become attached. Just need a little bit of patience for this. And that's how easy it is. So connectors come straight off, no damage at all. As you can see, all the pins are in perfect condition. It's really quick. You've got no danger of sort of doing any damage to these other plastic parts or also these six resistors down here. So it's a, like I say, it's a great option if you haven't got a hot air gun. So yeah, hopefully you find that method uh, useful. So what I'm going to do, I'll clean this one up as well and uh, I'll then sort of show you how I attach a new 40 pin connector to, to one of these boards.
good, so now I'm going to show you how I'd fit one of these new connectors. From what I've already done, I've basically lined it up on the pads. I've got the two fixing pads in position at the end. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to get this one tacked on. Then I'll move to the other and get that tacked on. Now I'm just going to tack them on lightly. I'll do them properly right at the end once we've soldered all the main pins. The first thing I do on the sort of fixing pad in view, add a sort of small amount of rework flux. If you don't want too much, just let it run underneath with this one. All you're looking to do is get the flux to run just underneath and the solder should follow it. That's all you're looking for, a light joint to start with. So I'm using leaded solder, so I've got my iron set to about 340 degrees Celsius. With this, just want to put a tiny amount on the corner of the fixing pad and it should run underneath the connector and the, and the pad. Just let it flow underneath. That's all you're looking for. So I've got a nice small amount just on that corner, sort of bridging the connector and the pad. So what we do now, move to the other end. Just get that in view. We'll do exactly the same on this one. So we'll that again, small amount of flux on that end connection. Just let the flux run underneath. And again, small amount on your iron, and we just get that just to run underneath the connector and the pad. I think that's bridged it. I'm just going to add a small amount more just to get definite contact. Right, it's definitely got it this time. All you're looking for a really small amount. So that's now fixed in position. So now we can concentrate on the 40 pins running along the main connector. So what I do, I'll get it sort of refocused. We'll get it zoomed in. And start running along them joints. Right, so I've already added some rework flux right along all the 40 pins. So let's get soldering now. I'm going to be using 0.25 millimeter leaded solder. It's very handy if you can get some for small pins like this. So I'm just going to go one at a time to feed it in as I go. You can always revisit any pins you're not happy with. So just slowly go one at a time. I wouldn't recommend drag soldering these type of pins. Let's just move the board upwards just to keep it in view for you. Let's carry on doing the soldering. So again, if you've got 0 0.25, you can really control the amount of solder you're putting on each pin. You're getting a consistent joint right along the whole row. So I've just discovered a small hair in them across them few pins. Let's move it up a bit more. Let's try and keep him focused for you. So I've seen a lot of people over the years try and do these pins with 0 0.5 millimeter solder. But if you can get some 0 0.25, companies like Farnell, RS Components, and Mauser and DigiKey in America, probably all stock this solder. So I've done videos on different size solders, definitely a, a great aid for you if you can get some different sizes. So that's all 40 pins soldered up. So as you can see, I've got a consistency right along the whole row, just kind of get that in focus again. So okay, I've got a nice consistent joint along all 40 pins. So what I'll do, I'll get these, just get the cleaning fluid out, get these cleaned up and then uh, I'll sort of show you the end results. Now just before I show you the end results for all the pins, the soldering of the pins, I'm just going to show you how I revisit my fixing pads and get these soldered up properly. Now I've already 
done the one at the other end just to speed the video up but I've done it exactly how I'm going to do this one so a small amount of flux so it just runs under the gap that's still there so we've got me 025 millimeter solder again and literally you're just going to hold your iron on the corner of that fixing pad you should see that gap disappear so what you're doing just add the solder it's just going to run around the connection now you've got a nice wall of solder around the fixing pad on the sort of board and the and the connector joint so you've got a lovely joint all the way down the side and right along the front there's a nice fillet right all the way around so right so i've already done the other end so hopefully i can go along the row and you should see a nice consistency on all them 40 pins so we're no solder shorts anywhere so yeah hopefully uh You've seen a good method that may be able to aid you in the future so as you can see the fixing pad at the end done exactly the same as the other end so yeah there you go that's how i refit these type of connectors so basically the main thing with these is get yourself some decent solder and there's a 0.25 and it's really going to aid your your soldering on these type of connectors so anyway what i'm going to do now i'll put a few photos up the end results and yeah, thanks all everyone for sort of tuning in. And what I'll, I'll be back in the near future with another soldering video. So like I say, so yeah, if you enjoyed this one, it'd be great if you could like and subscribe. And uh, like I say, I'll be back in the near future. So until then, take care and enjoy your soldering.